Good afternoon, Jim. Good afternoon. Nice to have you with us, sir. Uh, I mean, it is that, isn't it? It's uh, this is perhaps the you know the, the the greatest bit of evidence we've seen as to where we have. Uh, being able to sort of watch in in real time the exposing, if you like, of the the intricacies, the difficulties, and uncomfortable challenges of that post Brexit agreement. Well, put pretty simply, what you're observing is a manifestation of the surrender of sovereignty over Northern Ireland by the United Kingdom yeah. to the EU. First, it was on trade, but now because of the same protocol, this time Article Two. Uh, the British government, though its sovereign parliament passed a law for all of the United Kingdom, uh, uh, the High Court has ruled that it cannot and will not apply to Northern Ireland because it conflicts with superior EU requirements and therefore Northern Ireland is to be excluded. That's not just a, a constitutional affront, which of course is wholly incompatible with our supposed position yeah. as an inter integral part of the United Kingdom. But it also is an open invitation to make Northern Ireland a magnet for uh, unwanted migrants. Correct. Uh, um, this week past, we've heard talk of them uh, transitioning to the Republic to escape around it. Well, now they've got a much easier and softer option. is simply get on a boat and come to Northern Ireland, and you are untouchable in terms of the government yeah. surrounding legislation. Uh, so it has both colossal political uh, implications and social implications, uh, but most fundamentally, it can also constitutional implications. Yeah, absolutely vast and, and spot on, Jim. Is there any evidence yet that there is an increase of people trying to make their way to Northern Ireland in order to avoid being well, sent to Rwanda? Considering the doors were only thrown, thrown open yesterday by the High Court, uh, it's probably too soon, but there certainly was evidence that the Republic of Ireland was yeah. the... Uh, the venue for a lot of people moving from GB to escape the Rwanda bill, uh, well, and they were coming through Northern Ireland. So now, yeah. if the option of simply staying in Northern Ireland, and yeah. it really is beyond preposterous that a supposed UK wide law mm. uh, cannot apply to this part of the United Kingdom yeah. because this part of the United Kingdom has been left under the EU's writ rather than London's writ. Which is. Again, you know, this is maybe not completely the first time, but it's certainly a very high-profile example uh, of how possibly unworkable that arrangement was in the first place. Absolutely, uh, and in our terms of our trade, we already have that, where we're left behind in the EU single market, mm -hmm. where we're left subject to more than 300 EU laws that we don't make and can't change, uh, where we're in the same goods economy uh, as the Irish Republic and under the same agri-food laws, etc. All foreign laws, all EU laws, uh, and the British laws, uh, which could be passed in Parliament or could be passed in the Northern Ireland Assembly, uh, can't be passed because of the supremacy of EU law. Uh, and, you know, we're left under an EU customs code, which astonishingly decrees that GB, in terms of trade with Northern Ireland, is a foreign country. You know, it's not as easy to bring goods from Bolivia as it is from Britain yeah. into Northern Ireland, courtesy of this disastrous protocol. Indeed. Where do you think, I know you can only speak for your own party, but where, where do you imagine the likes of Sinn Féin will stand on this particular High Court judgment, on this court judgment? Because it, I would imagine it compromises a party like that because they will perhaps argue that, you know, they favour the human rights aspect, which I, I think is a, a bit of a red herring to call this a human rights issue, but nonetheless. But simultaneously, as the largest party, they will be concerned about an increase in immigration. Well, they've been caught in that bind in the Republic because they were all for open borders. Yeah. And then once it started... Until they had them. <laughs> yes, until they had them. Once it started to go down like a lead balloon with the, Repu with the public, in the Irish Republic, then then they, they they were seeking to find reverse gear. I don't know if the same will happen here. I think with Sinn Féin, uh, they see overriding benefit in the protocol because their mission has always been, and the, the mission of their IRA always was to drive the border to the REC. Yeah. Well, the IRA failed, but the protocol succeeded. And that's where we now not just have a trade border in the REC, we now have a, a, an immigration border in the REC detaching Northern Ireland. Uh, from the rest of the United Kingdom. So that will be music to the political leaders of Sinn Féin, uh, but uh, it will bring to us all 
social consequences which even they might struggle yeah. uh, to embrace. Jim, thank you for your time, sir.